you know, so much literature has been expended in the pursuit of exposing Hitler and the Holocaust and, and the terrible tragedy that occurred with the Jews where six million people perished. What most people in this country fail to realize is that the model for that was here, was the treatment of our Indian people was the model for Hitler and he said so he wrote it down and he said that the prison camps here were the model for the prison camps also the whole notion of turning the people against themselves within the prison camps and keeping them busy with each other so that they couldn't escape or didn't have other ideas was also born here and he copied it he thought it was a very good plan and he really admired Andrew Andrew Jackson you know, so it's a little known part of history, but it is a reality, and uh, nobody's ever really addressed it. Nobody's ever really talked about the Holocaust here. I mean, there were conservative, conservative figures, 19 million Indian people living in North America, 19 million, and by 1970, there were 260,000 they didn't move to Hawaii, you know, or they didn't go to Sweden. Where did they go? They are gone. They were gone. Killed. Murdered. But 19 million people. Well, that's not a holocaust. I feel that this country doesn't understand historically what happened to its indigenous people. They see it on television and they read it in the books, but they really don't see it in the practical sense. It points directly toward the racism of this country. I think that one of my goals is to have our people look at themselves and stop dancing for white people and saying we're so pretty. I want us to say, look what you've done to us. Look what you've taken. Look at the beauty we had and still have to offer you. And stop treating us like subhuman human beings. Because we don't, we don't deserve it and we don't need it. For more than 500 years, American Indian people have been subjected to the ever-changing whims. Who with sword in one hand and Bible in the other, swept across this land like a plague of locusts. What the people of the United States did not know was that their so-called enlightened nation was setting an example that would be followed in the 20th century by some of the worst butchers known to man, including Adolf Hitler. In their efforts to deal with the original inhabitants of this land, the European and then the American governments tried many different approaches. First they tried subjugation, then when that failed, extermination, and when that wasn't totally successful, then came the reservations. When the government set up reservations, they signed up the Indians who were assigned to that particular reservation. They took a role, as it were, at that time. Everybody was given a number so that they could identify the people who were reservation-bound Indians because reservations and the inception were no more than glorified concentration camps. Indians were forbidden to leave them. And so you were given your tribal identity right then and there by the United States government. It's another labeling system. Uh, there probably was an importance for it at the time, you know, to find out numbers of uh, indigenous people. And uh, now it's almost being used against us. And uh, for a lot of the Native American, Indian, whatever you want to call them, don't have a number to rely on. And uh, for assistance, for even being considered a part of us, of the rest of us, they're, they're put out, put aside, pushed away, and saying, you don't qualify 
even though they may have a higher blood quantum than myself. And so I don't see it where, where it's being used in a way to be beneficial to us. I don't think that this country will ever really heal itself until it answers the question of what it did to its indigenous people. As an American flag and a white flag of peace flew high over the camp's tallest teepee, as tribe after tribe was successfully depopulated, demoralized, and imprisoned on reservations, political winds shifted and extermination began to fall out of favor. Assimilation became a new byword of a concerned citizenry, and so an educational model to make Indians into imitation white men was proposed. The centerpiece of this plan was the Indian boarding school system designed by former Indian fighter Captain Richard Pratt. By sexually violating and brainwashing generations of Indian children into believing that their language, culture, clothing, and their very identity was evil. In actuality, the effect of the boarding schools was far more devastating and far-reaching than its creators ever conceived. It is now recognized that the boarding school experience has affected multiple generations of Indian people with such symptoms as alcoholism, drug abuse, incest, sexual abuse, and other major dysfunctions. Almost every Indian person alive today, no matter how successful, carries the residual psychological scars of yesterday and must grapple with the question, when it's all over, Will I be Indian or white? How do I define an Indian? That's a that's a political question that's very difficult to deal with. Traditionally, the Apache people uh, didn't have a definition of who was Indian. I'm the only person that doesn't claim to be American Indian because American Indian is only 500 years old and but I was here before Columbus so <clears throat> that doesn't make me American Indian so I'm a non-Indian nor I'm a non-American today America nobody knows what America is and nobody knows what Indian means so the only Indian that was defined by Congress is uh, primitive or North American Indian. But then what is primitive? Anything that goes by itself is primitive, but when you put a fence around it, it's not primitive anymore. So then what is Indian? Now if the Congress changes tune to what is Indian to who is Indian, so only half would be regarded as Indian. So I think there's a another way to look at that whole issue of what is Indian, what, you know, the word, or what we call ourselves. It's en Dios, meaning in God, that the people that he encountered were godlike, were, were very pure. And uh, that en Dios became Indio, which became Indian. We have lost so much blood, and so many of us have died uh, over the name Indian. I find the word Native American offensive to me. It's like, here's a nation of people that enslaved my people, stole my culture, tried to beat it out of me, and now they're going to include me. And I don't mean to sound unpatriotic, I'm a veteran, but they're saying, now you can call yourself a Native American. I'm not, I'm an Aboriginal, Indigenous person. I know I'm not white. I tried to be white, and uh, I couldn't do it, and they didn't want me. Because I'm not white. I'm culturally Apache. I relate to my tribe closer than any other human beings in this world. I know who I am. And I know my blood. Uh, I don't have to read in a book that somebody wrote at some fort some, somewhere along uh, back in history to tell me who I am. And I don't have to have a number to tell me that I am an Indian. You're Indian because that's how you feel. When you grow up, 
and you have an Apache mother or a Comanche or whatever, if she's 15 tribes, but she sings the lullaby to you of whatever tribe she feels, I mean, she knows, then you're going to feel the dominance of that in your life. As an in people, we, we have the, the responsibility to care for our own, to care for our young, take them in no matter what blood they have. If they're ours, they're ours. That's the simple answer. You, know, there, you can't say, you aren't enough of me, so find your own way. That's not what it's all about. We, we brought them into this world. So what happens when this young guy comes up? to the drum and he looks black and he says my father is such and such and my mother is such and such and I'm Indian what do you say to him? and I want to learn the song what do you say to him and he said you better make a place on the drum for him and have him sit because he's one of us as far as tribal identity is concerned this is for many years back in the times when this hatred and hostility about American Indians in our own country was so prevalent that many people who left the reservations, native people who left the reservations, hid their tribal identity so that they could be accepted by a, the dominant society. Indians were being relocated to the cities by the thousands to empty the reservations so that the termination policy could be affected. We suddenly had an explosion of urban Indians. The urban Indians oftentimes did not, once they had children, they would not enroll them with their own tribe. They didn't take the time or the effort or, as one Indian said, what's it worth to be an Indian? In the 1950s, the federal government instituted yet another new Indian policy known as termination. The purpose of this policy to eliminate tribal governments and tribal lands along with any vestige of tribal identity so that the red nation would become part of America's great melting pot. A major part of this program launched another relocation campaign which offered training, jobs, and a part of the American dream to any Indian who would leave the reservation and move to the city. What most Indians who signed up for the relocation program found instead was isolation, alienation, and further disintegration of their culture and identity. It is an active policy of the present day. By order of the U.S. government, more than 12,000 Navajo people have been forced in the last 25 years to move from their traditional homelands on Big Mountain in Arizona to be resettled one more time on land nobody wants. Contaminated desert bottomlands of the Rio Puerco, downstream from the largest radiation spill in American history. And the Holocaust goes on today. People are dying all over the world. There are Geronimo's all over the world fighting for their people. <laughs> 